hoodlums have attacked three police stations in Edo State on Monday. The three police posts attacked were Ubeku Police Station, Oba Market Police Station and Idogbo Police Station. The hoodlums also vandalized the correctional facility at Oko in Benin City, capital of Edo State, and another correctional facility along Sapele Road. During the attack, they catted away arms and ammunition at the station's armory as well as other valuables before setting suspects free. It was guarded that the vandals took advantage of the NSARS protests to perpetrate the attack on the police stations and the correctional facilities. At the Oko Correctional Facility, they were said to have broken into and freed about 120 inmates. Eyewitnesses say the hoodlums brought clothes which the inmates changed into before they escaped. Meanwhile, hoodlums also have attacked media organizations in Benin City. The African Independent Television, AIT, and Ray Power FM were attacked on Monday evening, forcing other radio stations to shut down. The Edo State Government has declared a 24-hour curfew across the state till further notice. The curfew is to take effect from 4 p.m. yesterday, October 19, 2020. In a statement announcing the decision, Secretary to the State Government, Osao Diongye, said the decision has become necessary because of the very disturbing incidents of vandalism and attacks on private individuals and institutions by hoodlums in the guise of NSARS protesters. According to the statement, while the government of Edo State respects the rights of its citizens to undertake legitimate protest, it cannot sit idly while hoodlums take laws into their hands to cause mayhem on innocent citizens and the state. Schools and businesses are to shut down activities accordingly, while those who cannot move safely are advised to stay put between now and 4 p.m. until calmness is restored. The Edo State Deputy Governor, Philip Schreiber, says the NSARS protests in Benin have been hijacked by hoodlums. He pleaded with the protesters to give the government a chance to implement the demands already made. Meanwhile, NSARS protesters on Monday took to the streets of Abuja, blocking major routes to the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, to echo their demands for an end to police brutality, among others. Some protesters, while speaking with PLOS TV Africa, stated that the protest will continue until the government keeps to its own end of the bagging. As a Nigerian youth, you don't have any future. And this is the only time we have uh, to express ourselves as Nigerians. And we know that in, we, have went, we have gone to school and there is no way you get a job if you don't have money to buy. If you don't have money to buy a job, you, you apply and your application will be rejected. We are tired of it. And we are out oh, here to oh, say oh, our oh, mind. Oh, they, they have been disbanding oh, it off and on. Uh -huh. yes. This is not the first time. This is the fifth time or the fourth time for the past how many years. It's a serious disbandment. But they are not matching words with actions. Yes. So we yes. want them to match their words with actions. Uh, we, we want, want job. We want, want job. We want light. We want everything go. good. We are fighting for our children. Yes. We cannot continue like this again. We have not been attacked with security operatives. The protest has been peaceful. They only try to block the movement. On that bridge when we are coming, Maraba Bridge here, the Mopo people block us that we will not pass. More than two hours we are there with them. One of my colleagues, a young man, they beat him, he fainted there. Called a spade, a spade. The other young girl also lost her handset. They beat her till she fainted. I am so happy uh, with the whole thing and uh, I want to commend my fellow Nigeria for what they have done so far. Because this morning, I took it upon myself. I said, whatever it takes, I will join. We, they have been making us a fool for a long time now. And right now, we are tired to be fool forever. Because right, what we need to do now is to protest and air our mind to them for them to know that we have been suffering. Hoodlums, disguising as NSARS protesters, have attacked operatives of the Lagos State Rapid Response Squad, RRS. At least 14 people have been injured on a Monday afternoon attack in a Butemeta. Armed with sticks and bottles, the hoodlums in their hundreds barricaded the RRS truck, pelting the operatives with stones. It was gathered that they overpower, overpowered the two armed policemen escorting the truck, descended on the officers, and left them with varying degrees of injuries. 
Some of the injured have been moved to the police clinic Ikeja and others were taken to the general hospital for medical attention. Thugs also attacked RRS operatives at Lasso on Monday morning, forcing their vehicle to detour. Lagos Police spokesman Olumuiwa at Dejobi has condemned the attacks on policemen, appealing to the protesters to get organized to avoid anarchy. And joining us live is the PRO Lagos State Police Command Olumuiwa at Dejobi. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Fantastic. All right, um, so let's start with how the police is responding to this um, alleged hijack of the protests by thugs. Well, uh, to, to me, the, the way I say it is everybody now is a protester. It's always very difficult for me to say somebody is a hoodlum or thug. Uh, in most of the many parts of the states, we we'll discover that for one reason or the other, most of these protesters, they are formed groups among themselves. So group one, group two, group three, will continue to attack one another. So I don't want to agree to the fact that we call some people talks. I don't want to, to agree to that. But a lot of the yeah. protesters have said that they have no connection with the people who are carrying arms, that they don't carry any cutlasses, they go there without any weapon, uh, that these people come and try to disrupt. And we have seen yeah. some videos. So uh, how uh, is it that the police cannot why? differentiate? Why mobilizing them? They were mobilizing on social media. So there was no how they would censor those who will follow their procession. There is no how they will censor who will follow their protest. I have been in their midst on several occasions. I have seen things myself. Personally, I don't want to believe that any talk is, is, is mingling with them or is uh, attacking them. Most of those that have been attacking uh, protesters, they are co-protesters. Those that they haven't arrested on their own, handed over to us, they are part of them. Either stealing phones, stealing their bags, attacking them. Most of them will arrest these uh, co-protesters and hand over to the police. And we will find out that they were actually mobilized. The, the one in Lekki, they came from, uh, from Ojo Elegua to come and mingle with them in Lekki, stealing phones, taking their bags, extorting them. The same thing in Ogolonto. The same thing in um, uh, K2 area of, of Lagos State. All right, so, so let, it let still me, goes I, I wanna, back to my yeah. original question. What is it that the police is doing? Since you have this kind of intelligence, and we know that protest is the right of, of citizens, what is the police doing to help fish out these bad eggs from those who are genuinely concerned about situations? Well, the, the, the problem is this. If they have allowed us to be part of their procession or their protest, it will have been a very nice thing. 90% of the processors is very hostile to the police. So we don't always go with them. They don't want to see any safe place. Even no matter how any place you have, no matter how any rank you have, the moment they see that you are police, they want to attack. So even the commissioner of police in most cases, they will always attack him. You could see the protest, you could see the message I sent out yesterday, my press statement, what we experienced at Okota. So the best thing for us is just to stay, to keep a distance and be looking at what they do. We lock ourselves in our stations now. Because they see you outside the station, they will stone you. So the best thing for the police now is to be at the base. Let us fortify our stations. So, uh, and let them sir, enjoy, sir, let I want to I wanna quickly base. step in here. Are, are you saying that the protesters that have been on the streets for the last one week have been violent towards the uh, police officers in Lagos State? Yes, the, 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 the protests are two faces now. The original NSAS protest was very, very peaceful. Until Sunday, when we started having, I think, Monday, Monday 12th, October, they, 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 another dimension came in to protest in Lagos State. And that was the first time we experienced what we experienced in Suru Aziz. So this second phase is not like the first phase. I wouldn't know the mission of the second phase of this protest. 
They have been saying it's reform police, reform this, reform that. You can't tell me you are reforming my agency and you are still attacking me. You do, can't do, tell sir, me you sir, want to help you... me. You want to fit for me, and you are still attacking me. Does the Lagos State Police Command understand uh, the idea behind peaceful protesting? Well, any 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 protest, any protest that you do, stealing, assaulting, looting, attacking, being aggressive, is involved. It is not peaceful again in any way. And, it is not I'm, I'm going to go back. Anyway. I'm going to go back to statements that you made earlier that the peaceful protesters, um, whenever they spot people getting violent amongst them, they hand them over to the police. Not, 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 not in all, not in all cases. I am talking of the two major, the two major places in the protest are the Lekki Toll Gate and the government house or government service in Alausa here. Those ones, those ones are so organized that they know one another, they arrange their things, they come with VJ, they do whatever they want to do. They have never attacked any single policeman. These two places. So have, it, have any arrests... other places within Lagos State, it has never been like that. So have any arrests been made? Because I believe that you understand the terrain that you work with. You understand what these areas are. Some of them that you've mentioned that, you know, you, you according to you, have experienced violence. Um, have any arrests been made? Because I believe that you should also understand the idea behind a peaceful protest and be the police uh, force in this state to um, ensure that no violence and uh, nobody attacks these peaceful protesters. So has, have uh, your officers been able to arrest any of these people who have gotten violent? Well, in, in, in the areas... We are having issues. There are some of them that have been picked. But at the end of the day, the problem we always have now is their lawyers will always come that they are part of them. And that's why we believe that most of the people causing troubles, they are part of the train. They are part of the procession. So far, so good. The ones we have, they are those that were actually they mingle with them and they have stolen some items from them or fighting at the place, at the various, these various venues. So we have very few of them with us that are at least investigating. All right, I, I wanna I'll take you back to what you said about protesters attacking um, police officers. Um, what is factual for now on, via, because you also acknowledge that this is being driven by social media. On one part, the uh, social media show videos of protesters going to uh, felic I mean to be with officers give them water and whatever um, uh, snack that they have and then we have the other side where videos are shown during the course of this protest of police officers molesting protesters and we know that there is an ongoing investigation um, in um, your um, office can you bring us up to speed on what the investigation is for officers who have been found to have molested protesters. And I mean, try and collate the two parts of what you just said, videos of protesters working with police and videos of police attacking protesters. We, we have two major cases recorded in Lagos State, and that was on Monday, 12th October. The young lady, being dragged on the floor, beaten by operatives in um, Suru Liri, area, area C. And of course, the grandma that was slapped by a police officer. The, the, those who slapped, those who beat up the, the lady in the video that went viral, four of them have been arrested. They are undergoing on the room trial. In fact, today is the adjournment day because the lady gave them today to call. So, and I'm trying my best point to even make the only room proceeding public so that they will know we are not, we are not giving them student names. We are not, we are not covering this man. So that is one. The second one is the mama. The mama, the man who, who beat up mama, slapped mama, has been arrested. Unfortunately, is a superintendent of police. And of course, at night, we felt that it's unbecoming of his rank and his status in the police. It was a 2IC anti-human, anti-kidnapping anti unit, or Gambasi, through Lily. He's the one that actually beat up Mama. He has been arrested. He has been queried.
But because we, he's, a, he's an officer, he's a superintendent of police, the query will be forwarded to Abuja, then to service commission to take next reaction on him. And I made a statement on that yesterday. We went to a quarter to see Mama, to, to sympathize with Mama, to apologize to Mama. In fact, that day, we averted another crisis because they said we should come down from our vehicles, the protesters at Okota, NNPC Junction at Okota. We had to trek for 10 kilometers. The CP, the DC party, all other senior officers for peace to reign, and we did. So, so far, so good. The two major cases we have as per molestation of protesters, those ones have been handled. And those involved, they have seen clearly that the police is working on the two cases and we are ready. They have seen the men, we have identified the men, and they are facing their music. So those two cases, we, are, we have no issues on them. All right, I, I want to quickly also um, ask if you're familiar with the case of Jimo Isiak. Jimo what? I think, I think it's pronounced Isiak. One of the protesters that was uh, alleged to have been felled and killed by a uh, bullet earlier in the protest. No, no, no. The only, the only it, it, it happened in Obama, no to be precise. has been killed in Lagos State. The only, the only man that was killed was a passerby, a driver of a Siena, Toyota Siena. Is there, bus. is there currently any investigation into his death? Yes, the matter, the matter is on. In fact, the Abuja is interested in the matter because uh, the first headquarters has, has been sending people to come and investigate. And don't forget. We, we lost a police officer too, and two of our men, two inspectors too, were injured. They are still in the hospital. So holistically, we are looking into the, the incident that happened at uh, through Leria area, through Leria area on Monday, 12th uh, October 2020. So the investigation is ongoing, please. All right, uh, let me come back to you. Considering the urgency, the protests that is ongoing, you've talked about investigation being carried out. We're expecting that um, after the one, you said the verdict for the officers in the Surulere's case is today, right? The only room trial of the four, the first case of the, the young lady that was being beaten up and taken to the company as captured in that video. Yes, you so said the verdict the, the, the for the officers. Is supposed, to, supposed to come up today if the lady comes around because she said she will try and come today. We have been trying to tell her to please come and testify because on the room trial is like a court. If you don't come to testify so that the case will not be the, 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 the discharged for want of evidence or whatever. So we are encouraging her to come and I believe she will come. So how soon will we get the verdict of these investigation and the actions that the police will take? Add that thought to the one, the results um, of the presentation of the 35 officers to uh, the um, Attorney General of the Federation for prosecution. How soon would we see some of these results, if, if you know? Well, we don't try as, try as uh, their, their, their processes. It's not what you can start a day and finish a day. But within the police, the disciplinary processes that we should do will be very, very fast. After today's, today's appearance in the only room trial or proceeding, I'm very sure, because I want to be there personally, I make sure the adjournment date is not too, too far from today. So within, within the police, whatever we are to do to make sure our justice prevails, we will do uh, right. immediately. I also want to quickly ask your views on the demands of the protesters for the end to the special anti-robbery squad. What do you think of their demands? The, 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 as for disbandment of SARS? Yes. Uh, well, they, 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 have, they have their rights. They have reasons to ask Nigerians. They have reasons to protest and make agitations on certain issues. But they, there's nothing wrong about it. And I'm sure the, the leadership in the country, either from the villa or the first headquarters at Abuja, must have seen uh, why their demands should be considered. And that's why the, the special terrorist court had been disbanded by the Inspector General of Police. Do, do you... Uh, you see, the, in life, the th you, things have two faces. Some will always tell you that SAS have done this for me in the past. They have helped me 
But generally, the condemnation uh, is, is on the outside at least about 80%. That SARS is this, SARS is that. And we are aware of some of their uh, excessiveness. So we, we, there's nothing wrong about such a demand. Uh, has, the, has the police force, um, according from, to the best of your knowledge, has the police force been able to checkmate some of the excessive um, behaviors of these SARS officers? Uh, can you share with us in any way how some of these people have been punished um, for the excessiveness you just mentioned? Yes. Um, the, the, the problem about SARS, generally as for punishment was before, they were not under any commissioners or police control, directly from Abuja. So a commissioner of police in Edo or Znafara would not be able to just punish a SARS operatives the way he likes until the IGP decentralized SARS and, and put them under the watch under the command of every commissioner of police across the country. So the, in Lagos State, the CP has mandated yesterday that in the last six months, some of our men that have been dismissed, that have been reduced in rank, or they have been given one punishment or the other, be published. So I'm going to take it up to publish this to make Nigerians know that the police, as a responsible institution, is not keeping his men, is not um, shielding them from being punished. We are going to make all these ones known. Apart from this, the method we have put in place is to make sure that we have our PCB, public complaint bureau, where we have platforms uh, through which people, uh, Nigerians, can get across for us and complaints against police actions or inactions. When, when you, so, when a, you a, say, a, uh, apologies, sir, when you say the police officers um, cannot be controlled by the state commissioners of police. Does this mean that they are allowed to act the way they choose to act, knowing that they will not be punished um, in as the state? As are dead, not presently now, as are dead. Don't forget, the, the Nigerians don't know differences between special anti robberies court, intelligence response team led by DCP about Yari, and STA, that is. Special Tactical Squad, led by DCP Kulu. The moment they see any of these personnel, they will always tell you it is SARS. We have these outfits under the command of the Inspector General of Police. And that's why you see they say IGP, IRT, IGP, STS, which means they are directly responsible to the Inspector General of Police. Not until we started having problems upon problems in various commands. And these commissioners of police complained to the IGP. It was then IGP said no. Every commissioner of police has that right to control any police personnel, irrespective of his office. So if they are IG teams, CPs in the state, they have right to control them. So that's what they have been doing now, unlike before, before the IGP gave that directive. All right, good to know that some things are actually happening within the police force. Uh, I, I might have missed it when you said it earlier. Please clear for us um, what exactly the police in Lagos is doing to protest um, the genuine protesters. Because we know that you might not be able to speak for Abuja. There are reports of police and uh, other security agencies standing by while thugs attacked uh, peaceful protesters in Abuja. There are videos on social media to these effects. We also saw some of them harassing protesters. So for Lagos State, you, you have expressed concerns that some persons are hijacking. What is the, being done in clear terms to protect peaceful protesters? Well, like, like we always tell some of the mobilizers that they, they, they should please tell their followers. The police in Lagos State is not ready to attack anybody. We are peaceful like we used to do in the, in the major SS protest before the second phase. We are not there to attack anybody. They should just see police as part of them. If they send us away, we will not protect them. It is not possible. That is the truth. Let them draw us near. We are not against them. Any moment we have protesters around, we keep our guns, we remove our magazines. It's to show that we are not ready to attack anybody. So if we want to appeal to mobilizers to tell their people that 
in Lagos State, police command, Lagos State Police Command is on strike percent for their protection. But in the moment they start attacking, they are aggressive to us. Police will withdraw because we don't have any issue. We don't want to have any problem with them. Most of our men might not be able to manage provocations. So the best thing for us is to withdraw our men from the, from, from the procession and send them back to their various formations to fortify our divisions and our formations. But if they are peaceful, if they are not too aggressive, if they are not hyper-aggressive, the command is ready to be with them. Command is ready to move. Before now, we have been giving them our vehicles to carry them. We've been, they have been using our patrol vans when they are tired. We tell the driver to allow them to join the vehicle. Just how it should be. But the moment you start stoning, you start harassing us, you are starting singing, abusing, police will withdraw because anything can happen. So we want to appeal to the mobilizers to tell them, Lagos State Police Command, 100%, if you allow me to say 101%, we are for them, we are not going to attack them, we are ready to just protect them so that everything can be peaceful in the states. I certainly have a lot of questions for you, more actually, but time is uh, not our friend on this segment. But we have to say thank you very much for You're responding welcome. to our questions as best you can. Thank you. Thank you. And enjoy your day. Right. You too. You too. You know, uh, the more he talked, the more questions came to my mind. I, I find it worrying that um, uh, the police in Lagos State are... I mean, from what he has said, it looks like they feel um, there is not much they can do to manage the situation with the protesters, those people who are invading the um, assembly of these uh, peaceful protesters. I think more can be done from the police end, more than saying um, talk to uh, the people who are coming to protest, because definitely we'll always have saboteurs, let me use that word, who would want to derail the purpose of these people that are saying, we want change, we want things It, to it be really different. just paints a very clear picture of the capabilities of the Nigerian police force um, to not be able to differentiate between peaceful protesters and you know, thugs who have invaded the protest, to not be able to accept that you know, some of these people have been um, you know, uh, protesting peacefully for the last um, week and, and beyond, to not be able to protect these peaceful protesters to, according to what he's saying, you know, run and uh, take cover when, you know, some of these people become violent, to also not be able to investigate properly and differentiate between the thugs and the peaceful protests. It really just tells, you know, what the story truly is like about um, what the Nigerian police force is. And I, I would commend, you know, some of the things that he mentioned about them also, you know, giving chance to the protesters, because I, I, I've been there. I've seen, you know, um, at the Lekki Ikoi Link Bridge, where police officers were, you know, positioned at the corner, they didn't interfere, they didn't involve themselves. So I would give that to him, you know, but about not being able to take control of the protesters, not being able to take control rather of, you know, times when it gets violent to protect government property, to protect the protesters, I, I, it just doesn't sit well with me. To also not be able to give proper clarification on any of the sounds officers that truly has been punished for um, being excessive or excessive use of force, to not be able to give proper clarification on any of the investigations that are currently ongoing um, um, with regards to the death of some of these people in Lagos State um, also doesn't just you know, well, work. He says the uh, investigation is uh, ongoing. But I, I must say, though, um, as much as yes, I believe there is more that the police can do, I think that the protesters should be a bit more vigilant because it's becoming violent and the federal government is already speaking and saying they cannot allow hoodlums to take over peaceful protests so they have to while we expect the police to do their job and help uh, keep the peace protesters also have to be vigilant to ensure that people who have ulterior motives don't come in and you know capitalize on the confusion and take over questions i would ask from there are what what's the reason you can find that many jobless hoodlums what's okay. the reason you would find that many jobless violent people just roaming around <laughs>